Welcome to a special combination backroom podcast and MacGuffin podcast review crossover. of crossover. Crossover. <laughs> Despite uh, our hatred of those in uh, crossovers. That's why Jason's not sitting down. Uh, we, we're going we're gonna to review Kick Ass. We saw it on, on this past Friday. Yeah, we went, uh, we went opening day. day, yeah. First of all, it was Sad. not. It, it, it was, was. It was, it was a Cinerama, and and if not not from Seattle, Cinerama is the place where it's always packed. It's a on. huge theater. It's like technologically state of the art. It seats like yeah. eight hundred people. I mean, it's owned by the dude that started Paul Microsoft. Allen. But, uh, so and he it, he just loves movies. Anyway, but it wasn't even full. I mean, it, it wasn't even remotely full. Like we, there's like to. a line of like fifty people. Yeah, and like it was maybe a fifth, maybe a sixth full. It wasn't yeah. even close to full. Yeah, but movie in general, um, I don't know. What did you think? Since you haven't read the comic. I haven't read the comic. <clears throat> um, I thought it was entertaining, but the thing that got to me the most was everybody except Roger Ebert was raving about how it was the best film of the year and this, that, and the other. It was so amazing. and I thought it was entertaining, but like best film of the year? Not even close for me. Yeah, it, and... I mean... Again, it's it's, and this goes back to the writing, and the inspiration of the writing from Mark, uh, Mark Millar, is that it substitutes. They they think that realistic means cursing and and ultra violence and 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 blood and. Uh, well, for for the record, you know, after just flipping through the comic, it's not even close to as violent as the comic it's is. It's not. It's, it's not. way toned down. Um. It, yeah. I mean, blood seems to be spattered everywhere. Pro- probably for its benefit, they yeah. actually tone it down. You know. Yeah. I mean, they needed a rated R movie. It's rated R anyway. But, um, and it's a shame because, you know. In general, you know, I didn't really like much of the movie at all. Except Ouch. I thought I thought hit I thought Hit Girl was entertaining. Hit Girl was great. I she, think you know that's it, one of those star making kind of performances. Yeah, she stole the movie. She actually was 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 funny and and you know they did the right thing with that character and maybe that's why that character. And kind she of just interesting. did an amazing performance for like an eleven year old girl. Yeah, which what she was when they were filming it. And yeah, I mean it's amazing. It's, it's that was interesting, but everyone else. I didn't care about any of the characters at all, and and uh, to well, be for, fair, for, I didn't ever care about care about the characters. For, in for the record, I, th- I thought the main guy who played Kickass did a decent job. I, I thought I thought he did better. I, I never heard of him. I wasn't sure um, if this like unknown guy basically would be good enough to carry a movie, and he did a decent job. I mean, I'm not saying that he didn't do a decent job. I'm saying that that from the writing, I just you know they they weren't characters that i wanted to mm. learn about they didn't want they weren't characters i wanted to care about yeah I mean, um i mean the only one that you know that you cared about was was you know maybe hit girl because you know she's being put into the situation where she clearly <laughs> it's not where a 10 year old or 11 year old girl right. normally would be um not that a high school kid fighting a superhero would right. do the same thing anyway but it, it's just it's you know Again, he, uh, Kickass himself, you know, he's kind of a selfish little prick. He kind and of is, but I mean, I, pre- I appreciate like you know the aspect that like he he's interested in becoming a superhero, and then he quickly realizes it's way in over his head. Like he's like, I am way unprepared for what this actually involves. I mean, it's funny to watch him like walking down the street in his outfit, trying to find a cat. He's like asking everyone where this cat is and stuff. It's just sort of like... Yeah, but then it goes from there to murder. Like the dude, you know, thinks, you know, it doesn't matter if they're, you know, Italian stereotype mobsters, but, you know, he just he thinks it's okay to, to mow them down with, with a... But, I mean, he Kick-Ass isn't actually the one killing people so much, I mean. <laughs> yeah, he is. I mean, at the end. end. I mean, he's, but like, he's, he's got a Gatling gun on. But, but at the same time, like, when it first occurs, he's like, what the fuck is going on? Like, this is so much more than I signed up for. Yeah. Like, he just thought it was, you know, beat some people up and have them be like, oh, no, I'll yeah. stop. I don't know. It, it, it just, uh, it rubbed me the wrong way for the most part. Uh, the, you know, the hit girl, like we said, kind of fun and, and goofy and silly. And so I was down with that. But the rest of the movie, eh. Yeah, it was okay. I mean, I, I, I mean, that's, it's sort of probably part of the reason why it's, uh, it looks like it will lose the weekend, its opening weekend. It looks like How to Train Your Dragon is going to just squeak out a slight victory. And personally, How to Train Your Dragon, a way better film. So if you're going to see one film... Um, as a, I don't know. Greg's wondering if uh, how it is as a comic film, like how how's it as an adapt adaptation. Adaptation, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, it's 
it's a I mean, it's I can't, barely a comic film. I, 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 think. I can't say how authentic it is necessarily, but I thought I thought it was a decent comic film. I mean, it's definitely better than like you know, but Dolph Lundgren Punisher or something like that. I mean, but it, see, that's a, that's the whole point. It's barely a comic film because it was made. It was the com- the the script was written at the same time as the comic was being written. I mean, it it, it never really. It's not really an adaptation. Um, plus. And you know you were talking. You know you, you did mention before that Ebert didn't like really it, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, but at the same time, I believe Cisco and Ebert back in the day gave Free Willy three two thumbs up. So you got to take Roger Ebert's criticism with a grain of salt. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's. I mean, Greg Greg's asking us about the R rating. I mean, I I, I don't think it was an issue. I mean, no, I mean it wasn't as violent as most. It, I mean, as. I, I don't think there was any effect at all. Oh, for, oh, oh like for, for limiting the number. See, I, we talked about I mean, that. 300 was an R-rated film, and that did $80 million opening weekend. So I don't think that that was necessarily what slowed it down. I don't. I honestly, I don't know. It sort of reminds me of Snakes on a Plane in the sense that there was so much there was hype, internet hype for There it. was so much internet hype, and then when it came time for it to finally be released, it just kind of flopped at the box office. So I don't know if it's going to be quite that epic of a flop, but... Yeah, I don't think it's going to be that... I mean, I think it'll be But $20 million dollars opening weekend is a pretty weak opening weekend, despite what Lionsgate is claiming. I'm sure it's a disappointment, it's because disappointing everything them. pointed to it being a huge release. I mean, Kevin Smith and all these other people have been hyping it for a long time now. Yeah. And, and they've been... I mean, they've been... You know, setting out the the art of kick-ass, big old promotional books, and I mean everything, and and T-shirts and everything else, yeah, and, and so. it just doesn't it it. I don't know. I I again, maybe maybe I should be glad about it because I'd like better superhero movies, comic yeah, book well, movies to be. Perha- to be out perhaps there. some of the viewers have seen it, and if you have, come by backroompodcast.com and let us know yeah, you what thought, you thought. I mean, maybe maybe we are in the wrong. I don't know. I doubt it. Yeah, if you thought Kick Ass was Kick Ass, let me know. I, I kind of, I, I don't know. I mean, I it's sort of one of those things. I think the hype was just too great for what it was. If I if I didn't have that hype going in, I might have even enjoyed it more. But it was so much like I was expecting it to be this awesome film and. Sadly, I believe you said that you were more excited about the A Team trailer than you were oh, about A-team Kick looks Ass. Awesome. <laughs> we'll talk about that when it comes out. That's another. The yeah. one thing I do want to mention is John Romita Jr. actually got some of his art in the in the uh, in the movie, yeah. and uh, when they were telling the tale of of uh, Hit Girl and, and Big Daddy, uh, yeah, they, that was cool. The the, the John Romita Jr. art was really nice. I liked yeah. that. Um, also, I'll give credit where credits due. Uh, Nick Cage doing his uh, Silver Age Batman voice yeah. was very funny. Uh, it actually was. It made me chuckle a little bit. I didn't. Cr- I didn't guffaw, but I but, chuckled. Yes. But so it so has. It has a few. It's some positive. But uh, if you're gonna spend your money, I'd say go see How to Train Your Dragon because that was a as an actually a great film. So. I'll go see it. <laughs>